Time is non-existent when you're in here. It's, it's sunny all day and all night. That's actually true. Look look into the light, Jen. Look into the light. It's going to hurt in a minute. I should yeah, probably actually, stop looking into actually, the light. that's also true. Hey, all you Firebase developers. Welcome to another episode of Ask Firebase, the show where we answer your burning Firebase questions. I am Jen Person, and today my co-host needs no introduction. What you said needs no introduction, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so this is Frank Van Poffelen, and for those of you who don't know, he is definitely our most prolific Stack Overflow question answerer. I think so, yeah. In addition to being a developer programs engineer <laughs> on Firebase, yes, DP. I like saying Firebase engineer. It, uh, it sounds Firebase a bit simple. Firebase engineer. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it is a very long name. I feel sometimes I feel like they just like pull them out of a hat, you know. <laughs> uh, this one very, pretty much did, yeah. Yeah, thanks so much for coming back on the show. It's sure always thing. a real pleasure to have you here. Same here. I mean, I get to talk out loud when answering questions instead of typing them on a keyboard. You tell me uh, you don't like speak them out loud while you're typing. It would be awkward when I'm answering them on a bus. So like, <laughs> we don't sit next to that guy anymore. <laughs> no, like, oh, that's always the case. Muttering to himself. Okay, so let's get down to it, shall we? Yes. So our next question comes from Brian Hogg on Twitter. It says, is a UID secret data? I would assume it needs to be attached to other data sources and doing so doesn't violate best practices. So is it safe to share this? And it's a really good question, Brian. It actually is not, um, not sensitive data at all. So a Firebase Authentication UID right, identifies a specific user within Firebase Authentication. And it doesn't do anything more than that. And you have many, many places where you have an ID already, right? For example, on Stack Overflow, my ID is 209103. Yes, I know my Stack Overflow ID. Right? And, but knowing that doesn't allow you to do anything, right? You can't now go to Stack Overflow and sign in as me, right? Because you don't know my sign-in credentials. So there's a very clear distinction between sign-in credentials and the ID. And the ID you can totally share, because that's why I just told you that my Stack Overflow ID is 209103. Right? So no, you can definitely simply store the UID with any other records that you want to relate to that user. In fact, that's what we recommend you do. I'm really bummed that I just don't know mine off the top of my head, too. So I could be <laughs> like, well, actually, mine is uh, this. Are they like in, in number order? Yeah. So you're like the 209,000th, what did you say, 103rd? Mm -hmm. uh, wow. Yeah, there, there were still a few people before me on Stack Overflow. Yeah, but uh, certainly, I mean, you're, you're right up there with the most prolific responders, so. Yeah, it's it's a bit of an interesting competition recently for Firebase, but I've been doing this for a while, so definitely the number one of, of Firebase for all time. Uh, it's lovely helping people, so. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I always want to, too, but you have to be watching it. I have to be sitting there waiting for it to say one new question, and then, like, sometimes I'll submit my answer before it's complete, because I know that <laughs> uh, you're going to get there before I do, so. Um, Definitely a competition. I know I'm not in the running, but I'm trying to do my part. Maybe I should host some Ask Firebase, and then you can answer questions in the meantime. OK. Yeah, I get down with that. I'll, just, I'll be over here answering no. questions. It, it is at times a competition. I do notice that. And Doug Stevenson writes uh, one of our other very prolific uh, uh, answers from, from Google. Uh, but we also have community members who answer a lot of questions. Yes, and we, we do. love that. So, yeah, yeah, I greatly appreciate that, because we're only like a handful of people. Mm -hmm. We definitely depend on our community members to help out. Yep. Do we have any more questions, you think? I might have a couple. OK, let's you go for it. OK, our next question also comes from Twitter. And uh, Sylvia wants to know, uh, you know, they saw a video, great video about Firestore pricing. Mm -hmm. Could I use a hybrid approach of using the real-time database and Firestore for different kinds of data? Or is there any reason not to do that? I love the new 280 character limit on Twitter, by the way. We get much, much more complete so, questions. Yeah, it is like almost impossible to ask a tech question in 140 characters. And it's definitely possible to combine Firestore and real-time database in a project, right? There are still some use cases that uh, Firestore doesn't cover. For example, uh, it doesn't have a presence system because actually the protocol that we use doesn't support presence. Um, so that's a good reason to still use RTDB, right, real-time database in your project. Um, and you can uh, definitely just combine them, right? You just import both of the SDKs, and then you can read from the one and from the other. They don't conflict with each other in any way. Um, so, so yes, should totally be possible. And it doesn't really matter whether you do that for uh, pricing reasons or for uh, reasons of the feature, right? Both are completely valid. Uh, and the real-time database is there for you to use. So. 
Yeah, and if you have to share data between them, you have uh, the server-side SDKs, the admin SDKs, which can uh, allow you to um, access Firebase products from a server, and you know that you could trigger them using Cloud mm -hmm. Functions. So when you make a change here, you can um, you know copy it over into the other database, so on and so forth. That's actually a really good one. We see that happening occasionally now, right? Where people uh, are not sure yet which database they want to use. So they start with one and then write a cloud function that copies the data from one to the other, and which is actually a totally valid approach. And it's a great way to test out both, both the databases that we have and see which one works best for you. Cool. Thank you for your question. That was great. You ready for another one? No, let's do it. Our next question comes from Igniter. Igniter says, I want to get the number of unread messages for a given user by one query. How would you implement such a task? Ooh, let me think. That one is always a bit tricky. There, there's actually there's the the naive approach that you think you always need, and then there's the one that I usually do. So the naive approach is that you start tracking what messages each user has read, right? And that means that you need to have uh, like uh, a message ID and then a user ID and whether they've read the message. And th that's definitely possible, but it's going to lead to an explosion of data, right? Because as you get more users, you get more messages, and you also need to track of more messages whether the user has read them. So while it's technically possible, it's not the approach I would normally recommend. A much simpler approach is actually to track the last message that a user has read. So if you would see all messages as a long list of messages chronological, right? then all you actually need to know, right? because normally, we, you show messages in an app from oldest to newest. So all you need to know is what was the newest message that they saw. right? And this one you can store either in the database or in the local storage of your app. And then when the app restarts, you just read that single value. Let's say that it's a timestamp. And let's say that right, you loaded it yesterday for the last time. Then you do a query, give me all messages that have a timestamp newer than yesterday. And with that, you can simply get all the new messages and um, tra then track which ones they've actually seen by, for example, tracking the scroll position. A much simpler approach, because you only need to store one value for each user. And it works pretty well, because a lot of chat apps actually use this. Cool. Good call out. OK, Jen, we have a question for you, actually, I see. So, oh, boy. Yeah. It's from uh, Twitter. And it says, Cloud Firestore triggers support on create, on update, on write, and on delete as their trigger uh, reason. Could you add an on snapshot trigger so that it fires whenever a user subscribes or unsubscribes from that data in either a collection or a document? It would be really helpful right, to monitor user activity. Yeah, I really appreciate this suggestion. And whenever you have feature requests, if it's something that you really think pertains to your particular app, please be sure to file those. And we will link the feature request below. In response to the specific example, um, keep in mind that uh, you don't necessarily want to track specific users and what they're doing in your app for privacy reasons, but something you could sort of do if you want to monitor overall how many people are doing this activity or that activity. Um, you could use a Google Analytics uh, trigger. So when you have some sort of conversion event that runs, then you could trigger a Cloud Function off of that, which could allow you to uh, keep track of a certain event and maybe do something in response to it. When someone subscribes to a specific or reaches out to a specific collection, you could also uh, fire a um, Google Analytics event at the same time. So you could use that as a trigger. Um, if it's something where you want to respond to the client and maybe you're not collecting that uh, sensitive information that could identify specific users, there's also, um, you know, you could have them write to a specific place in the database at the same time or send out an on-call function. There are definitely other ways around it, but Overall, I'd say probably your best bet is a Google Analytics trigger. That's a good one indeed. Yeah, for sure. Puff, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate having you here. And do keep those questions coming, because we need those to make the show. We really can't do it without you. So when you're building some sort of Firebase project and you have a question, you know, if it's a long one and it has code, be sure to put it on Stack Overflow. But you can also put a link to Stack Overflow on social media with the hashtag at Firebase, and we do take a look at those as well. And if you like the content you see here, be sure to subscribe to the Firebase YouTube channel so you can see all of our new shows right when they come out. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on a future episode. Bye. Wait, did somebody just say that I'm not agreeable? Oh, it was me. I it's disagree. Not a, it's not a problem. <laughs>